Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome. We are glad to have you here. We're going to start our webinar in 25 seconds. We're so glad to have you here for what will be the very last, my very last voiceover webinar of 2021. And uh, this is all here to, uh, to help you prepare for the new year, and I hope you guys are excited about that. And we are down to the final seconds before we get started, so let's get things going here. My name is Bill DeWeese, and welcome to the 10 painful truths of voiceover. Those of you who have followed me for any time probably didn't expect a webinar by this title, but I, I tend to be known a little more for, I'm, you know, I'm a, pr a pretty encouraging guy. You could go so far as to say I'm nurturing, I'm, you know, in, in my training, which works, I think works very well for me and my students. However, there are times when we all need somebody just to be really blunt with a painful truth that, that we need because these things can become an obstacle to our success. So that's why we're here for this tonight and why I'm glad you're here. My name is Bill DeWeese. And uh, if we have not met before, just a very quick introduction. Um, so the reason I'm, I do this and I'm qualified to do this is because I consistently generate a multiple six-figure income from my home studio, which I've been doing for the past 15 years. Over the past decade, I've taught thousands of other voice actors how to build a profitable, profitable voiceover business. I've recorded over 10,000 paying voiceover jobs. My credits include Disney, Walmart, American Express, United Airlines, Fox, the PGA Tour, NBA, Amazon, Google, and many, 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 many more. So tonight we dig into the 10 painful truths. Now you've heard, heard it said that the truth will set you free. And that is my hope, is that as we address these things, and the reason, just very briefly, the reason I was inspired to put together this webinar is, and perhaps maybe it's because of COVID and just the the large mass of people who are now kind of migrating or trying to migrate into the voiceover space and make it their next career. Um, I get the sense from many people that I've talked to that it's a slam dunk. It's a cakewalk. You know, it's a piece of cake. It's simple. My mom said I had a great voice. Uh, you know, I love to, I'm in theater. I, I come from radio or, uh, you know, I'm just highly motivated. This is not going to be that complicated. And the reality is voiceover is not complicated, but what it isn't is easy. And I'm sure your parents told you this when you were a kid and it was so true. It, nothing worthwhile is easy. Uh, anything that you want to build that has value requires a lot of you. It's not a second thought or an afterthought kind of thing. It has to become primary. It has to become a sense of focus and a point of dedication and commitment. And so uh, without further ado, let's get into the 10 painful truths. And here's painful truth number one. It, for goodness sake, is not the gear. And I'm gonna turn my camera off so now that you know that I'm here. Um, I bring this up because I hear this over and over again. I see it online in discussion groups. I receive many, many uh, emails with questions regarding, you know, I've got, uh, what microphone do you use? What compressor do you use? What EQ? Here, here's what I'm using. What do you think about this? And the reality is I usually don't know what they're asking me about because I don't make it a point to follow and keep track of gear, equipment, primarily microphones and audio interfaces. And not, not that those things aren't important. We all need microphones and audio interfaces and computers and audio plugins. But here's the thing that you have to realize is that that great microphone that you've had your eye on, that great piece of equipment you've, you've seen people talking about and discussing online as if it's the holy grail of great sounding audio, that is not the thing that is going to build your voiceover business. That's not the thing that's even going to make you competitive. You need great sounding audio. There's no doubt about it. But did you know? that you don't have to have expensive equipment to have great sounding audio. Would it surprise you if I told you that I started my career with a, what you could buy now for like $60, a Marshall MXL microphone. I did national TV ads with that little $60 microphone. And I sat in my bedroom closet because I learned how to take inexpensive equipment and make great sound. And when you work with somebody who's knowledgeable and understands that kind of thing, and has a background in engineering and audio design, you can do that. And buying a $1,000 or $5,000 microphone doesn't even guarantee you that you're going to have good audio because it's far more than just having a good piece of gear. It's knowing how to use it. And uh, just one quick illustration, and I think this will make sense to you. 
if you've ever played golf or you've known a golfer, and I'm an avid golfer. I'm not a good golfer, but I'm an avid golfer. I've played golf since I was 13. I love it. I'm terrible at it, but I absolutely love it. And in the back of my mind, I, I know this, I know it to be true that the golf clubs, the gear does not make the golfer, but occasionally I will break down and I'll buy new clubs. I did it this past summer. I bought a brand new set of TaylorMade P790 irons with a, with a like a powder coated black shafts. And they're gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous and they feel amazing. But would you be surprised to find out that it has not helped me one bit with my golf score? That microphone, that interface that you've got your eye on, that's not going to make your career. You've got to learn how to use the equipment to get great audio. So that's painful truth number one. The first thing you have to come to grips with, I think, as you begin to build a voiceover business. Painful truth number two, no one in the voiceover industry cares about how great your voice is. Your mom might care. Your partner might care. Your friends might care. You might even have people who have heard you on the telephone who say you have a great voice, and maybe you do. But here's the thing, at the end of the day, there are, there are multitudes of people with great voices, far better voices than mine. I mean, unbelievably great voices. Some of those voices are even represented by great agencies and managers. And you know what? Many of them hardly make a dime. Many of them make nothing in voiceover. That is, if I've learned one thing over the past 15 years doing this as a full-time business, it is not how great your voice is. And I don't mean that, I, and I'm not trying to put you down or make you feel bad about yourself. If you have a great voice, it's, it's, not a, it's not a liability. There's nothing wrong with having a great voice and you can use it to your advantage. But the reality is a great voice does not make for a voiceover career. Ultimately, what you have to learn to do is the thing that's the hardest to do. And that is to communicate your personality, not your sound. There's a big distinction, not your sound, but your personality. You have to be able to communicate with people. You have to be able to move them at the level of their heart and emotion. Move people to action, make them feel something. And that has nothing to do with how nice your voice is. Absolutely nothing. So if you've got a great voice, I'm not saying don't get in voiceover. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is the sound of your voice has very little to do, if anything to do at all, with how successful you'll be in voiceover. You must learn, and it's not an easy thing to learn, I'll be honest with you. And it's something even after 15 years, I have to work very hard at. And I work very hard with my students on this, is learning to peel back the layers of what we think we're supposed to be and what we think people want us to be, to be who we really are, because that is what people, that's the person that people believe when they hear them. Hey, Bill, All you right? said I could yeah. jump in? That I could yeah, jump please in do. Life. Yeah, this, is, that this is Fred Lee. Yay. So for, uh, the one story that I think really illuminates this is the one about the guy that you were a little bit reluctant to do the demo for. Could you tell that story? Yeah, you know, I've produced hundreds of demos in voiceover and uh, for a broad, you know, uh, range of, of talent levels, uh, just because there's a broad range of things that you can get involved in voiceover. And I remember there was one student in particular, and I'm glad you brought this up, Fred. Uh, because I think it really does illustrate the point well, in that um, and when it comes to just flat out talent, he just didn't have a lot. Uh, nice guy. And I'm not saying he had no business being in voiceover. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I'm saying is when it comes just to pure talent, it just, it, you know, there was not a lot of it. And we created this demo. And um, and I was, I was hoping and praying that, uh, that I hope he does well, because I was hoping I, I hadn't done him a disservice because I want everybody I work with to be successful, but I just wasn't fully convinced. But a few months down the road, I got a phone call and this particular person told me uh, they wanted to follow up and thank me for the work I had done with them and training them and, and their demo because they were working not only full-time, but they were so busy they had to hire a full-time assistant to take care of the workload. So it's not, again, it's not about your microphone. It's not about how beautiful your voice is. It's not even about raw talent. It's about, do people believe you? And that is something that you can be trained and taught how to do, but it's not easy and it takes work. Painful truth number three, change is inevitable now and in the future, adapt or die. I, there's, 
so many things I, I see and hear people say online in regard to voiceover. And it usually comes in the form of a complaint or a gripe. Can you believe, you know, uh, the people are, you know, you know, trying to negotiate their own rates. They're not getting union rates anymore. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. You know, can you believe it? Well, you know what? You're going to have to deal with these things. Change is inevitable. Technology, computers, the internet has changed everything. This is not your father's or your grandfather's voiceover business. This is a completely different animal. But there's many, many people who have been doing this for a long, long time who have a lot invested in having it not change. So, but it does change. And if you want to be relevant and if you want to be competitive, I remember I used to, I taught, I was a college professor um, a number of years ago. And back in the mid and late 90s, I was teaching marketing in an MBA program. And uh, I remember back then, you know, doing a lot of case studies, we were talking about how computerization and the internet was affecting organizational structure and how hierarchies were being flattened and where it used to be a very, you know, uh, layers and layers of, of, of on the org chart from the CEO and the many vice presidents and then the junior vice presidents and so on and so forth. But technology had allowed these lines of communication to exist that didn't before. And they had to flatten their organizations. And, and also it changed the way products were created and marketed and time to market and all of these kind of things. Business has known this for decades. This is like 20, 25 years ago. But when I hear what I'm going to call institutionalized voiceover talent, these are people who have been doing this for a long time. And they're very traditional in the way they approach it. They still don't get it. It's 2022. We're not operating like it's 1995 anymore. It's a whole different ball game. So as you get into the business, understand that things will change. You know, the, the puck, if you're playing hockey, you know, you're going for that puck, that puck is moving, it's changing in direction. And if you're moving in one direction and the puck moves, you darn well better shift direction and go after it. Because if you don't, you will die. And I see many, many institutionalized, established voiceover talent whose careers are withering away because they refuse to change. They refuse as if as if it's some sort of um, uh, like a martyr, and it's a cause they're carrying, and they want everybody to join their cause. And frankly, it doesn't matter. You know, when Uber and Lyft came along, it killed the cab companies, and it didn't matter whether you know you were pro cab or anti cab, or you were a cabbie or you owned a cab. It didn't matter. Those guys lost out, and they lost out big time because the change came. So the question is not, are things going to change? The, the question is, will you be able to adapt and change with it? Painful truth number four, you, and it's closely related to truth number three, you must learn to be your own audio engineer. And I, I, this is something I see a lot and because this can become a major obstacle to people who want to be successful in voiceover. And you may think, well, audio engineering, what does that have to do with my voice? What does that have to do with marketing? But well, it actually has a lot to do with it because this is about creating your product. And sure, 30 years ago, if you were lucky enough to be able to record voiceovers, you may go into, a, you would have gone into a studio somewhere where there would be a professional engineer. And yes, there in rare occasions, these things exist today. I've, I've certainly had my share of these sessions where, you know, whether it's done online or done physically in a studio, there are engineers, but they are few and far between. The vast majority, I would, I would go so far as to say well over 90 to 95% of all the jobs out there, you must engineer them yourself. So what, what does that mean? Well, if you are not, if you don't have basic computer skills, and let's say uh, this is not just a function of age, but you know, let, let's just say you kind of missed the boat on the computer thing. You're a little bit older and you decided, you know, you didn't want to get your get involved in all that because it was just a big learning curve and it just looked it seemed really complicated and overwhelming. But you want to be in voiceovers. The reality is you need to go take a course on computer 101. You need to understand how computers operate. You need to understand basic functionality of how a computer operates and how to get online, how the internet works, because these are the things at a very basic level that you have to understand. You have to understand how to write emails and respond to emails. You need to understand how to keep track of, of your expenses and such as it relates to your business. And you'll probably be using a software program to do that. Maybe even in the cloud. So, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a 
things have changed a lot. And there's a, the things that you have to understand in, re, in relation to that. But beyond that, you need to understand the audio piece of this. In other words, recording, levels, setting levels on your microphone, how to work a DAW, a digital audio workstation, how to record the audio, how to edit the audio, how to process the audio, how to clean it up, how to send it out to clients, how to do edits. And as I as I speak these words, if you if this is new to you, it may feel and sound really overwhelming. The reality is you can learn these things. You can, I mean, I'm I, I'm 62 years old and this is what I do for a living. And sure, I didn't start doing, just doing it yesterday. But the reality is, I, you know, I first learned how to use a digital uh, editor back when I was, well, I was, I guess, so uh, early 40s at the time. And I was a master of, of tape, magnetic tape, reel-to-reel -reel tape. I worked in broadcasting. And I, I mean, I was really, really good with it, where you use reel-to-reel -reel tape and to edit recordings, you use a razor blade, a white grease pencil to mark the tape where you need to edit it. So, and then a razor blade and then splicing tape. I was so fast, I could be playing a song on the radio, taking two and three f phone calls during that song, edit out the pieces that I don't want, edit in the pieces I need, put it together, and then have it queued up and ready to play as if it's live coming out of a song. I mean, I was really good. So when somebody said, you have to learn digital editing, I was heart sick. I mean, I was sick of my stomach. I did not. I did not want to give up reel to reel tape. I mean, it sounds ridiculous now, right? <laughs> I mean, I sound like a relic. I didn't want to give up reel to reel tape. I mean, compared to what I, you know, we have at our disposal, that seems ridiculous. But the reality is, is that the if things keep moving along and you adapt or you die. Now, the good news about audio engineering, you can learn how to do this. You know, like for instance, my son is a professional audio engineer. This is the kind of thing he works with, with voiceover talent with. And I'm not saying it has to be him, but I'm saying you can be taught these things. But if you want to succeed as a voice talent, you need, you must learn how to do these things. Painful truth number five. This is a hard one. And I, it was hard for me to even write. I didn't even want to say this. It just, it, it, I hate to say it because it sounds so negative, but it's true. Most people fail at voiceover. But let me tell you a, a little something that, um, probably won't surprise you, maybe it will, and that is that most people who own small businesses fail. Prior to being a voiceover talent, I actually worked for a, um, a consulting business consulting firm in Chicago, International Profit Associates, IPA, and my job was meeting with small to medium-sized business owners throughout the course of the day and to determine um, you know, what they were doing well, what they weren't doing so well, and how we might be able to, to, help, to help them out. And what I found out, it's really amazing, is that most people don't fail because they're incompetent. They don't fail because they're stupid or they don't know anything about what they're doing. Um, they fail because oftentimes it's their ego. Because the same thing that, that, that allowed them to start something, they had the confidence to do it, did not allow them to open themselves up to anybody else's input. They build it themselves and they're going to go down with, you know, it's going to either, uh, they're going to ride or die. And it's going to be by their hand and by their decision making. And they don't want any input, you know, from anybody else. So there, there's no flexibility to learn. And that's a really big problem with people who start their own businesses. So you have to be prepared and open to learn. Um, and it's not even because the product, you know, because the product isn't the best. You don't have to have the best product to succeed. You don't have to be the best voiceover talent to succeed. You just need to have a good plan to succeed. So being successful in business is not about being the best. It's not about having the best. You know, and I hear people all the time talking talking about this. Well, aren't there other people who do voiceover, you know, and you know, aren't there plenty, plenty, plenty of people who are better than you or me at this? Well, sure there are. There's always people that are going to be better at you at something. Uh, you know, there are no markets where nobody else exists but you. That just doesn't exist. There are people trying to do this, but the people who do it are the people who are open to learn and they don't give up because they follow a plan systematically. You must have a plan 
a tried and true plan that actually works. This is not the kind of thing you want to fly by the seat of your pants, as my mom used to put it, doing. Painful truth number six, and I hate to break this to you, but you will never be discovered. If you're looking to break into the industry or be discovered, um, it's just not the way it works in the real world. It works that way on Hallmark movies. You know, uh, this it's kind of the fairy tale kind of thing. And I, I wouldn't say that it's never happened. I actually met a lady once who, uh, through a friend of mine, uh, just very briefly, she was working in retail on Michigan Avenue, downtown Chicago, um, was singing while she was working. A casting director from Disney just happened to be in the store. Long story short, she was invited to be a part of a Disney project. Because of failing health of her of her husband, she wasn't able to follow through with it. But yeah, I, I know these things do happen. It's like, you know, winning the lottery or winning Powerball. I know people do win billions of dollars, but frankly, it's not gonna be you and it's not gonna be me. It's just the odds are stacked so far against us. Why would you even take a chance at something like that? Again, going back to the idea that you need a business plan, you're not going to be discovered. It's not the way it works. You know, leave it, you know, and I've got people who will leave me voicemails and I can tell they're trying their 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 hardest to, you know, to put on uh, their voice, their, you know, their radio voice or whatever voice they think, you know, I want, I want to hear so that they'll be discovered. And it just, it just doesn't work that way. You've got to put in the work. And if you don't do the work, you won't be heard. You have to be heard, but you've got to put in the work to do that. Painful truth number seven, institutionalized voiceover talent don't want you to succeed. I referred to institutionalized voiceover talent a few minutes ago. These are folks who have been around for a long time. Um, they, you know, they, they do things the way they, it used to be done. Back when they were gatekeepers, back when they were agents, back when there was a union, back when there was a much smaller pool of talent, and therefore, because of the laws of supply and demand, they could make more money for the work that they did. That's the way it used to be, you know, and I hope they enjoyed the run while they had it, but it's not the way it is now. And so while there are some very generous and kind people in voiceover, most of them will be your peers, the people who are trying to build their business. People who have been around this for a long time, as a rule, are not looking for you to succeed in voiceover. Because they believe their mind, they have a very, a very much a scarcity mindset. They see it as a very limited pool of, of opportunities because that's what they came up in in voiceover. And they fear that if you get one of those, of those opportunities, they're not going to get one of those opportunities. What they don't see is the much bigger picture. And that is that technology, the internet, computers have multiplied exponentially the opportunities the job opportunities that we have. It is so cheap now to create content. I mean, think back prior to, you know, to YouTube. And now there are so many, I don't even know how many hours of, of content uh, live on YouTube, but I can tell you this, because of you, just YouTube alone, thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of voiceover opportunities have been created just through YouTube. It's so cheap and easy to, to create content. Uh, more uh, corporate videos are being made. More training is being created. Uh, advertising, it goes on and on and on. There are more opportunities now than ever before. So be careful who you listen to. And when somebody says, well, you know, there's the market saturated, there's no opportunities. That's BS. It's not even close to the truth. There are more opportunities now than ever before. Uh, there will be people who will try to scare you away because they are trying to protect their turf. Now, again, I'm not saying everybody, but as a rule, especially those who are more institutionalized thinkers in voiceover will be that way. So just beware when you see somebody in a chat group online be extremely negative and try to scare you off. Just understand their it has nothing to do with you. It's about them and protecting their turf because there are plenty of, plenty of opportunities for them, for you, for me, and for everyone. Painful truth number eight, no one is looking out for you. You are your best agent. One of the things that I love about business, the voiceover business or, or any other business, it's really the ultimate act of self-responsibility. 
when you launch a business, you're not putting it on anybody else. You're not, you're not accounting on an employer to take care of you. You're not counting on the government to take care. You're not counting on anybody else. You're saying, this is on me. If it, if it survives, if it flies, it's going to be because of what I did. If it doesn't, it's going to be because of what I did or didn't. You know, I didn't do it well enough or I'd, I didn't have the right plan in place. Uh, but the painful truth is there's nobody else looking out for your success. Agencies, generally speaking, are audition mills. And I'm not saying there's not a function for that. I mean, you know, what I mean by that is that they just crank out auditions. They're not looking out for you as an individual. That's not a criticism. It's just a reality. They're not, you know, and they have a place and it's great to have opportunities and auditions, but their job is not to get you work. Their job is to try to book talent from their pool of talent to do the job. Whether it's you, me, or somebody else, they could care less. Uh, and again, that's not a criticism. That's just that's just the reality of the way the marketplace works. Um, they're not looking out for you. There's, you know, there there are not voiceover managers per se. Uh, well, you know, maybe I, maybe there's somebody out there. I don't know who they are, but I'm not aware of anybody. You know, the the, the union's not looking out for your for your best interest. Uh, the agencies aren't looking out for your best interest. Other people on Facebook, your friends aren't necessarily. I mean, everybody's everybody's trying to get work point is you've got to do it yourself don't count on anybody else to do this for you it is on you and the good news is you can do it you can do it uh if you have as, again as i keep going back to this idea of having you need a plan and once you have the plan and you understand the steps and you understand how to get yourself heard you need to understand how to create great audio you need to understand the process of, of uh, getting a demo or, or creating a demo how to market that so that you can be heard, and then how to interact with clients to not only get the work, but then to cultivate and keep those clients long term. That's kind of a thumbnail sketch of it. But that's that's how the business works. And once you understand that, you can take personal responsibility and you can do that. Because again, nobody else is going to do it for you. Painful truth number nine, the old voiceover business model doesn't work anymore. And this is just closely related to the last point. You know, when I first got in the business 15 years ago, and people are still being told this today, here's the advice. Get a coach, get a demo, get an agent. That was the business plan. That's like the worst business plan ever. It's terrible advice. Yeah, do you need coaching? Sure you do. Do you need a demo? Yeah, yeah, of course you do. Do you need an agent? No, it's okay to have them. I've got multiple agents, nothing wrong with having one. But you need to have a plan, a place where you're out there actually hustling the work because you cannot take a, that's a passive approach. That plan is extremely passive. And the I guarantee you, the people who are sitting back at home waiting for their agents to save their career have a long sit ahead of them. And it's going to be a very lonely and eventually bankrupting experience for them because their agents are not going to save them. That's not the way the business works anymore. So the old VO business model doesn't work. What does work? It, what does work is taking responsibility by learning to be your own engineer, getting your demo, understanding how to market that in the right places. There are some great online platforms. I've got, you know, I've got one student um, who I started working with um, years ago who this year, uh, he was telling me the other day, he'll make $350,000 this year just from direct marketing, just by, just by reaching out to content producers. That is how he has built his business. Now, the great news is there's far many more ways than just direct marketing. Uh, social media, again, being, a, being another one of those. But that old model doesn't work. You have to actively market to be successful in voiceover. Painful truth number 10. Finding and learning everything you need to know is daunting. There, there's a lot to learn in voiceover. Uh, again, not, not to be discouraging, but you need to understand that it's, uh, there are a number of things you need to understand. We've talked about some of these things tonight. You need to understand audio, computers, audio, the internet as it relates to like doing session. Like tomorrow, I have a, I have a two hour a uh, session booked with a studio on the East Coast, and we're going to be doing it over the internet, Source Connect. So that was, you know, something I had to learn. Not complicated, but just another thing, you know, that I had to learn. Dealing with clients, sending your audio, 
you know, the marketing processes and all the different marketing strategies that you can utilize to build a voiceover business. And the great news is this, there is no lack of, of, of information. I mean, if all that took was info to succeed in voiceover or anything else, we'd all be successful beyond our wildest dreams because we are on information overload. We don't need more information. What we need is select information, put in a format that we can use, that we can execute. We need a plan. A plan puts the odds in your favor. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about, uh, as a voiceover coach, what I've done to help in this regard. Uh, several years back, we came up with the, this idea, Fred, who you heard from a little bit earlier, and I came up with the idea of what I call the voiceover blueprint. I came from, you know, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm a former college professor, among other things, but one of the things I really loved about working in an academic environment, and I managed a, a university-owned radio station, and uh, we had a professional staff, but we also utilized students who would learn in that environment. So I love the idea that I would have students in class where they could learn in a classroom setting. I could then bring them into the environment where they could watch the professionals work and they could be mentored and they could learn and that we would have chances to be together and to talk and to answer questions and to knock ideas around. It was so much more effective than simply learning from a book or watching or watching a video, as, as great as that can be by itself. Uh, it was a comprehensive approach to education where you could interact again with, with, with your teacher. And I always thought that it would be so cool is if we could create an environment like that, a learning environment like that for voiceover. And a couple of years ago, that's exact, exactly what we did. We call it the voiceover blueprint. It's a three-part program. The first part is comprehensive online training on demand, video on demand, uh, where I've created class classes and training that cover every aspect. I mean, literally every aspect of how to get into the voiceover business and how to succeed in the voiceover business. Uh, broken down into to modules and categories so that you follow you know a curriculum just like you would if you were going to school to learn to learn the information that you need to know and to learn the plan that you need to know but it goes beyond that because you don't need just the information you need a chance to process that information with peers and with mentors and so I've got the private Facebook group for students in my voiceover blueprint so part a big part of this is watching me work in real time. So for instance, I mentioned um, that tomorrow I'm doing, I have a two hour live session booked. Uh, my students will be, will be watching that within the Facebook group. They'll be able to see uh, me record. They'll be able to hear me interact with the engineer. They'll be able to hear the client give me direction. Uh, so whether I'm doing auditions or I'm doing jobs or whatever I'm working on, as long as it's not under a, 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 a non-disclosure agreement, students have a chance to actually watch uh, what I do. In addition to that, Adele, within that face, yes. You know, I don't believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there's anyone else in the industry teaching voiceover that does this. Is there? If there is, I'm not aware of it. I've looked, I've not, yet. Yeah, and if you know of anybody, put it in the, in the question box, but I'm not aware that, I'm not aware of anyone, Fred. That's a, that's a really good question. Um, and being in this group allows you the opportunity to interact with with your peers, with other students and and instructors. So it's in addition to me, we have several other mentors, people who are experts in marketing and in performance and in technology, so that you can ask questions and interact and have a very broad based learning experience uh, that focuses on the things that are most important and the things that you need to know to uh, to succeed. And then the third part of it is live group coaching. We have nearly a coaching session every day of the month. And um, some of the sessions are on tech, where you, you can talk about equipment or setting levels or EQing your audio or the things that, you know, the things that, that you need to learn regarding audio and get your questions answered regarding audio. Also voiceover marketing, performance where you have a chance to read and get feedback from a pro. Um, also uh, we have, we have a coaching session, multiple coaching sessions, a couple per month, devoted just to the Fiverr platform, because this is one of the, the newer and more exciting platforms where start, my students are beginning to make quite a bit of money on. Uh, and then uh, I also do, every, every week I do regular Q&A webinars where we just 
talk about the things that are important to you, as well as I do some performance coaching in those Q&A webinars as well. So as you can see, it's a, it's a comprehensive approach. It's not just throwing information at you, but giving you a chance to process that within the context of a, of a group, uh, whether it be in a, a teaching uh, environment or within the Facebook group where it's a little more informal, but also you can watch me as I work. And I'm going to, I'm offering a very end of year Christmas pricing special for you. Now, my voiceover blueprint program, the price is going to be going up to $6,000 beginning January 1st, which still is a, is a value for what you're getting with that. But for this end of year Christmas sale, what I want to offer you is a three month special offer, which begins on January 1st, goes until the end of March. You're going to get complete access, everything that exists and the Blueprint program. Uh, all the three things that I talked about, the Facebook group, all of the live group coaching sessions that we do, all of the content that's available on demand, you get all of that for the next, uh, for the next uh, three months. And at the end of that time, if you want to continue on, that will be credited toward the full purpose, or the full price rather, of the program. So if this is the kind of thing that you I've been thinking about. You want to get into voiceover and you wanted to know the truth about voiceover. And really that's what I've, I've tried to do tonight. Just be very honest so you understand and that your expectations are in line with the realities of, uh, of voiceover. Um, this is your opportunity. And what we're going to do is, uh, let me put that up here. The price of this, oops, sorry. This three months is only $997. Now, if you want to have a phone call before you make that commitment, I'm going to give you a URL where you can go to the canyoudovo.com. We only have 40 slots available. If you want a phone call first, you can do that, but only as long as the slots are available. Now, if you go ahead and make the purchase now, you can also still schedule a phone call if you want to, but those 40 slots are all we have. And once those are gone, those are gone. And Fred, in terms of actually making that purchase, are we going to upload a link into I the- put, um, I put a link in the chat for everybody. And for those who might not be seeing this live, uh, you can just go to canyoudovo.com and book a time and we'll get you that link. But yes, the link is in the chat. I've put it in there a couple of times. I'll put it in one more time. And so everybody has it in the chat who's here on the webinar itself. All right. And, you know, I, I've shared a lot of information with you tonight. Um, but, you know, hearing stuff and doing things are two, and I know you know this, but they're two completely different things. Hearing isn't enough. Getting the information isn't enough you need a customized plan geared to you and you alone. If not, your time here this evening has been a complete waste. Now, the way to get it is to get on that call with Fred or go to that link, click that link. We would love to get you in the program and make sure that 2022 gets you off to a great start in building the voiceover career that you deserve. Yeah, and Bill, as people start to put some questions in there, one of the things I saw people, when you commented on the fact, or I made comment, I commented on the fact that no one else is doing this. No one else is doing what Bill does to allow him to work live. Some of these other things that you put in here are where people are teaching, but no one else is actually doing it live. And if my suggestion would be that if you're going to work with anyone and you're going to follow a program, just make sure that the people that you're working with are actually working currently in the business. Bill, do you have any comments yeah, on that? That's huge. It's huge. You know, if you have a goal, and you're you're committing your time and your resources, your money to someone to get you to that goal. Wouldn't you want to know that they could that can actually do what they say they've done? And I don't mean 30 years ago. I mean today in today's marketplace. I mean, of course, it only makes sense. So make sure that they are doing what they say they're going to help you do. It just doesn't make sense otherwise. Got it. So if uh, if anybody has any questions, be happy to entertain them for the next few minutes. Just pop it in. I see, you know, one of the things that somebody commented on, I thought it was pretty funny because you made it as one of your uh, pain, uh, painful truths is the fact that somebody noted that you're not using your TLM 103 today. You're using a <laughs> Speaking of gear. Yeah. The, and there's a very, this is, for me, this is, this is a matter of uh, function, not just, you know, needing a new microphone. But yes, I switched to a new microphone and there's a very specific reason for that. I moved this year. Uh, we moved back to my home state of Ohio, uh, where I live. I'm not in a basement any longer. I'm on a main floor, which means I have, I'm exposed to a lot more environmental noise than I was in my last home studio when we lived in Illinois. 
And one of the ways I'm mitigating that and dealing with that is by this shotgun microphone, which is much more directional. So uh, for instance, they were building a house across the street, you know, for a number of weeks, they just finished it up. But during that time, there's a lot of heavy machinery, a lot of noise going on. I have uh, school buses that pass by, cars. This helps minimize all that environmental sound. So that's the reason I have it. Got it. I can answer Michael's question, or you can as well. Michael's asking, the full blueprint is currently $5,000. It's going up to $6,000 on January 1st. Uh, so that is the price. Now, the full blueprint, one of the things, somebody asked me the other day on the phone, Bill, they said, well, how long does the blueprint go on? And I said, we have people been in the program with us for over 10 years now. So this is something that is an ongoing program. Uh, you know, there is a, a yearly renewal fee that people pay that is under $1,000, but it is once you're in, you're in. So yes, that's the answer, Michael, to that question. And it's uh, dynamic, you know, because the content's always fresh and we're always, do, you know, it, every week we're doing new stuff. Yep. Absolutely. And again, this is the non-traditional, I think, non-institutional approach to the voiceover business, wouldn't <laughs> you say? I think so. Other questions, folks, from you? Anything else you want? Any clarification on the painful truths? Anything that you need help with? You know, Bill, apparently we've uh, done our job. And uh, again, there are 40 slots available. So if you want one, make sure and either pay outright for the program with the link I gave you or schedule a call. Bill, great job. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye-bye.